Mark Howard has been training business owners for over 20 years with online business tools and strategies that help them grow and succeed. If you want to grow your business fast and save time, then keep listening. If you want to grow it even faster in less than three months, then visit www.businessmachine.biz. And now, here's Mark. Good day, this is Mark Howard from The Business Machine, and in this episode, I'm going to take you through my top six tips on presentation success. It doesn't matter if you do presentations on a weekly basis and networking meetings, or if you do presentations for your work. These top six tips, I guarantee you, will give you the best results for your presentation success. Did you know that you can get even more from Mark Howard, including mini marketing sessions? one-to-one sessions, and even access to his private VIP Facebook group? Interested? Then head over to www.patreon.com slash business machine and check out the different memberships he has on offer today. Okay, let's get started here. So you're possibly sitting there right now listening to this and think to yourself, do you know what, Mark? We know that you do digital marketing. We know that you help businesses out online and helping them grow. So what is this whole thing with you doing presentation skills? Why is it you're able to give great advice about presentation skills? And why should we listen to you and not just go and search this stuff online? I I get that. The thing is, there's two reasons why my presentation advice and skills really come into play and will differ greatly from what other people are doing. So from the first point, I have over a decade's worth of presentation skills. I've had more than 15 years experience in this. And that comes from predominantly from BNI. and I'll be honest with you, from doing a lot of BNI, and I got a lot of training from those guys. The presentation formats I tend to use, I don't actually always follow their formats because I don't necessarily think it works for the right customer. And there's a reason for that. And that comes in point two. I've listened to a lot of the keynote speakers that I've had over the years and a lot of their conferences and had the opportunity to sit down with these keynote speakers and ask them the question, you know, what makes a great presentation and what do you do to prepare? So that's my first point. My second point really is when you start to look at presentations and the way they're formatted, the way they're put together, they actually follow a very similar format to marketing and to web design and to social media marketing. They're actually hand in hand all the way through. So as I've got over 20 years experience in digital marketing as well, I can bring a lot to the table. And what I tend to do is bring all of this together and format this in a a way that my clients and salespeople I've spoken to can actually take my skills and actually go away and deliver a great presentation. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I can take you from my top six, my top six, it's not everything, okay? My top six presentation skills or tips or tricks. If you want to know more about this, then what I suggest you do, subscribe to my podcast and you'll be updated on one new book that's been launched in the next couple of months on presentation skills. Well, I should take you through from zero to hero. To take you through the whole format of how you can be the best presenter in your networking group or how you can be the best presenter anywhere where you need to present in any shape or format and i'll take you from that and if you've never presented before or you have a fear of presenting i take you through how you get past that as well trust me you're talking to the one guy who can never ever do presentations years and years and years ago and now you can't stop me. So let's kick off with my top six tips. And here we go with tip number one. So tip number one is called being specific. Now, in BNI, they say that specific is terrific. I understand that. But the point of the matter is, if you don't tell people what it is you're looking for, who you're looking to get in touch with, the chances are that they're going to miss that and you're not going to get that um, introduction or you're not going to get to the right people. And it doesn't matter how many times you do a presentation, somebody can look at it and it's only when you turn and say, hey, do you know, I love an introduction into XYZ company uh, or to Mr. ABC of XYZ company, then the chances are you will get that, present, you get that introduction because somebody in the room will turn around and say, hey, do you know, I actually know that person. Now, I do know, I do know that it's not always possible to be specific in a presentation. It's very difficult, in fact. And there are certain categories that 
makes it very difficult to be specific. Trades in particular, you know, people like um, motor mechanics, for example, electricians, those type of people, they can't really be specific because basically anyone who has electricity or has a car, you know, that's basically the people they want introductions to. So it's very difficult for them to be specific. So the, the add-on to that is if you can't be specific, is to tell a story. And to, to tell a story of what you have done for someone and the experiences that you have done and take the person on the journey through your presentation from taking them from the moment where they had this client was in trouble or needed issues and how you fixed or resolved the problems. Storytelling is very powerful and it's one of the biggest things that we do in social media and it's one of the biggest things we do on websites and even in podcasts. You listen to this podcast, it's all about storytelling and the reason is people relate to stories. So in your presentation, tell a story and especially when you're doing keynote presentations. I've done a number of keynote presentations over the years and if you ever listen to my keynote presentations, they're all about storytelling. And every single one of them will start off with a story before I get into the main presentation part and then it finish with a conclusion to the story as well. Another little side top tip there, by the way, if you've not done that before. My point number two, so top tip number two, is prepare. It sounds very simple, right? But a lot of people don't actually prepare, especially when they're doing presentations at BNI groups or uh, associated networking groups. They tend to wing it, which is not the best way to do a presentation. And when I say prepare, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend hours and hours and hours in front of the mirror, but you just need to know what it is you want to do and the one or two main points, maximum of two, that you want to get across in the presentation. So rather than think to yourself, I need to get across these four points, don't. One or two, because people will not remember too many points. OK, so make sure you get across these points in the presentation and by doing the preparation, you can actually focus yourself and say, OK, this is what I want uh, people to remember when I finish the presentation or these are the points I want to get across. And this brings me on to my top tip number three. So top tip number three is focus. Focus on just the one service or offering that you have. Now, the chances are. If you're somebody like myself, for example, I've got a lot of services, I've got a lot of products, I've got a lot of offerings that I do, and there's simply no way I can cram that all into the presentation, and, and I wouldn't do that anyway. So rather than then trying to say to everybody, hey, this is everything I do, woof, and then just bombard them, what I actually do is just focus on the one, and then I can be very specific about what this one service will offer or this one service the advantage of them taking this one service through. So if you offer more than one service or product or offering, then think to yourself, which one is going to bring in the most for my business? Which is the one I really want people to come back to me with and say, hey, look, I can help you out with that. It's one of the biggest mistakes I see in presentations to this day. People have four or five services and you sit there and they've got like 60 seconds, for example, and they're trying to cram it in. And it's it's just impossible to do. It really is. And people lose track. They get confused. I know it sounds silly. You might say, but why do people get confused? It's because you give them too much information. You want to really keep it simple for people. And that's why you need to do it uh, with one service or offering. This brings up to my next top tip. Top tip number four is what you only need to prepare maximum of three to four presentations a year <laughs> everybody especially with bni these networking events they think oh, i need to prepare a presentation every week no you actually only need to prepare three or four a year and this is the reason you do this so what you do is you prepare say this is how you're going to do three presentations and then what you do is for one month you focus on the one presentation presentation number one month two be uh, presentation number two Month three would be presentation number three. Month four, you go back to presentation number one. Now, that might sound a bit strange, but the reason you do that is each presentation is different or have a slightly different offering. Remember what I said on my top tip number three, we'll have a slightly different offering or a slightly different approach. But by doing it that way, if you do your presentation on a weekly basis, the same one, the chances are, number one, you're going to get your point across. Number two, people are actually going to hear the message. They've got to hear it more than once to for it to sink in. And if you do go to networking events and you sit down, the chances are you have visitors in the room that people come in and not there every single week. So 
by doing the same presentation weekly for a month, you're going to hit more of those people, especially if they only turn up once as a visitor, for example. Can you imagine if you've done a really great presentation on, on week one, but week two you've done a slightly different presentation, the visitors have turned up and it didn't actually bear any resemblance to them. And if only they heard that one you did from week one, which would have been a better presentation. So I need to focus on doing free maybe four presentations here pre prepare them and that's it it's job done you don't need to do anymore i've just saved you a load of time in the process my top tip number five this is going to be the most important one that you're going to come across uh maybe other than point six let's let's get to point six in a second point five it simply is make it easy really make it easy for your sales team your sales team and those people that listen to your presentation by the way make it easy for them to understand what it is you do because you know at the end of the presentation regardless if you've got 60 seconds 10 minutes 45 minutes it doesn't matter how long you've got at the end of that presentation those people need to be in a position to go away and actually tell other people about you and what it is you do. If you make it complicated, if you put jargon into it, if you put technical stuff into it, if you put long, uh, complicated words in it, if you put uh, products or systems in that people really don't understand, if you start going through all these technical side of your business that people don't understand, then guess what? They will switch off because they don't understand it. And if they don't understand it, how can they tell somebody else? So what you've got to do is dumb it down. I know it sounds really stupid. I know it sounds, you think, oh, no, I can't dumb it down, Mark. What are you on about? No, you need to dumb down your presentation as much as possible. Focus it on as if you're trying to present to maybe, I don't know, school children. Maybe you've got to teach a lot of preschoolers about your business. How would you do that? Now, obviously, you don't want to do it in a condescending way, but what you've got to do is take it out all the jargon, make it extremely easy for the people listening to you so, that, as I said, they can go away and let other people know what a great service or what a great presentation you've done and why people should contact you. And my last top tip, this is number six on the book, so I hope you're making a note of all these all the way through. My last top tip, now before I go into this, just a reminder, please, please, please subscribe to my podcast. You get updates on all the podcasts that get straight to your phone or your mobile device or wherever you are. Plus, when I'm bringing out my new book on presentation skills, and trust me, you want to read this book. It's going to be absolutely amazing, and I will be doing some offers on that as well. You will be notified via my subscription, so please do subscribe. So what is my point six? My point six is simply this. I'm going to say these to you. CTA. CTA. What is CTA? CTA stands for, if you don't know, call to action. The call to action is what you want people to do after you've done your presentation when you finish your presentation and you've walked away when they've walked away from the building what is it you want people to do there's no point in doing a presentation and then saying that's it guys thanks very much for listening and sitting down give them a reason give them to do something you now maybe it's to say can you help me get in touch with this particular person can you get me into this particular company you know, there's so many different things it could be. You just got to think of your call to action. And the, if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, your call to action should be the very last slide. It should be quite clear. This is your, what you want people to do. Keep it very simple. It might be you just want them to follow you on social media or maybe to subscribe to their podcast. I don't know. But the point of the matter is if you don't have a call to action, people are not going to act upon your presentation. And then your presentation becomes worthless. And it doesn't matter if you're doing a 60 seconds or you're doing a 10 minutes, or you're doing a 45 minutes, no CTA, no result. That's the bottom line. And interesting enough, this is like a side top tip as well. And this is just something to consider with your call to actions. Your call to actions will define your presentation. I'm going to repeat that for you. Your call to action will define your presentation. So whenever you start your presentation, whenever you start, and this is the biggest tip you're ever going to get. I'm not even going to make this tip seven. This is your bonus tip. Your bonus tip. Whenever you do a presentation, whenever you prepare for your presentation, the first thing you start with, the first thing you get right, the first thing you define is your call to action. You don't do anything else. That's the thing that you focus on. That's the one thing you prepare for. Get your call to action right. You define the rest of the presentation and the rest of the presentation becomes a lot, lot easier. 
So good luck in your presentations. I'd love to see what you come up with. And as I said, keep an eye out for my new book. It will be available on Amazon Kindle and in paperback very, very soon.